If you made it this far thank to part two, thank you so much. We've covered a lot of ground. I know it's a long video. We covered a lot of ground, and I am thankful. Only those, and the people that's going to listen to this, people like you, you're the ones that care about who are these people? Why do they, why do they, they why do they say that, why do they, it sound like they have the answers? That's the whole point. They always going to sound like they have the answers. A good liar always, you always believe him, don't you? If he's a bad liar, you wouldn't believe him. Good liars, fantastic, phenomenal liars will sell you everything and you will buy it and eat it up and you'll be like, yes, I want more of it. That's what a lying wonder is. We discussed that in the last video. I'm going to be for a lot to the last video to save time and that's what we're getting to. So don't forget to go there. So here we are. We discussed angels. We discussed uh what you know the, what the spirits the medium psychics witchcraft the spells what it means in the last video now we're going into who are these people how do we know they got no power to actually know what's happening in your life god's gonna tell you not me so let's take a look and i hope you got your pen and paper because thank god because we're going through this baby we're going through it i love you enough to tell you this stuff i don't i love you love you very much I gotta tell you the truth. So who are these people? Second Timothy three two three through uh, sorry Second Timothy chapter three verses two through six tells us what kind of people are they, and the people they appeal to, who they are, who want to become these people, why they seek to become these uh, these psychics and all these crazy folks and people who want to work evil. They say, oh, it's not evil. It's white magic. It's black. It's all corrupt because none of it's from God. Let's keep it real. So who are these people and who do they appeal to and who do they reach out for? For men, they will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, which means what? The natural affection, man and woman. Okay, natural affection, loving someone else to not want to lie to them, loving someone else to not want to take their money for their lies. And remember, the more they believe their delusion, the better the liar they become. But at the end of the day, they're arrogant. They truly believe that they are who they say. These witches like Simon, they truly believe. And we still got to wrap that story up, too. They still believe. That they are, they, they, they know what they're doing. They're arrogant. They're boastful. They'll tell you. I've been doing this for years. I, I have a high success rate. I got testimonials. My stuff works. Really? And that's why you're charging people. Of course they do. And I could give it away for free, like God does. Salvation is free. It has one cost, and what it's costing you. Is what is has already killed you. You. You're the reason you're going to hell. You're the reason that you're unsaved. God gave us Christ to change that. So that does not have to happen for you. It was given to me. And it's not exclusive like religion likes to tell you. Baptist, Methodist, they all got their own ways. Roman Catholics, Islam, cults, uh, spiritists. We're spiritualists. You know, Hindus, all, all of it's a lie. They all have their own way. There's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus. And Jesus is not exclusive, which means he's not going through religion. He's offering you himself. He's offering him to you and saying, give me your old you, and I will give you my righteousness and a brand new life. That's real. Born again, which means you had to be a truly Born, brand spanking new. This skin is old. Eric inside is brand new. And that's where the real struggle begins, brothers and sisters. The fight, the spiritual warfare that you as disciples, if, you, you, if you're a disciple listening to this, you know for a fact what this means. If you're unsaved, you're a witch, or you're any of these things that, that, that leans toward these people, you must know, that's why when you say, oh, that Christian's a hypocrite, 
That Christian is fighting an agonizing battle that you are totally unaware of. Their man once said, you know, uh, the, uh, there's a joke that says, uh, I don't want to go to church because there's so many hypocrites there. Well, the pastor said, man, we got room for one more. Oh, yeah. Jesus said it himself in Luke chapter 17. It is, it is impossible for you not to commit sins as a disciple. But he says, woe to who brings sin into your life. These witches, these mediums, these tarot readers, these psychics, these mediums, the Satanists, the atheists, all the anything against Christ. And if they attack this Bible, attack Jesus, that is an enemy of God. Plain and simple. Plain, they got to believe everything in here without a spot or wrinkle of doubt. Because here's where all the truth is. Witches are by nature rebellious. What I mean by nature, they're sinners and they're arrogant. They think they know what's best. They think they know what's good. They think they know what's evil. Isn't that the same thing that happened in the Garden of Eden? Of course they do. Every human being does. And it's boastful that they will encourage people, find your own path. The manifestors, you, think, you, you attract things that you want. You know those law of attraction liars, scumbags? Guess what? You're what they're attracting because you got to buy their books. You got to buy. I'm not trying to laugh because it's funny, but that's how it works. You know why law of manifestation works for them? Because they've sold it to you and you bought their junk and you give them more money. That's why there's always a book on manifestation. I just read a book yesterday about manifestation. Of course you do. They got to keep the, the, they gotta keep the con going. And remember, the better the liar is because the better he believes what he's saying is true. The way it is. Me, I just trust this. Not this. Not, this is right. This is it. This can destroy every argument that I or anybody else wants to bring up. It is indiscriminate. It doesn't care about man woman, gender, religion. The word of the Lord is true and it is as true today as it was yesterday and it will stay that way even when this earth is gone. Plain and simple. Ooh, I'm sweating like a Baptist preacher. So that's where I came from. That's the religion that enslaved me and shackled me and kept me in bondage. Spiritually speaking, Absolutely. And was I still in sin? Absolutely. It was only until I was freed in Christ. It's the only time it happened. And you can't be lured into these things. Don't think it couldn't happen to believers. The only difference is, is we may dabble in the pigsty. We may play in the dirt and the muck. But eventually we got to come out. And we always do. We always do. So we talked about, so, the, so we're talking about what appeals to these people and what kind of people they are and who they reach out for. So we know they're lovers of self, self-help people. There you go. Lovers of money, self-help people love money. Those money guys always talk about money. Whole minds wrapped around money. Yep. Arrogant, boastful, blasphemers, blasphemy against God, blasphemy against this Bible, blasphemy against Jesus. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. They're unforgiving. Oh, yes. You hear them all the time. I just block people. I just get rid of them. Of course you do. Of course you do. It's part of your character right there. Unforget they're slanderers. They will slander Jesus. They slander disciples. They just they slander churches. Everything Christian is trash. They're hypocrites. They're all day long. Without self-control. They don't deny themselves. They don't deny themselves at all. Not at all. Matter of fact, the manifestors, they ain't denying themselves, are right. they want things to come to them and they will tell you. You deserve it. No, you don't. No, you don't. You didn't work for it. Why do you deserve it? Well, I was believing it should come to me. That's what they want you to believe. That's the lie. Because the more you believe it, the, and it doesn't happen, the more maybe you're missing something. Maybe you're missing that next book, that next bit of wisdom, that next bit of, that's the carrot they dangle in front of you. When you're a Christian and you saved by Christ, you got it all. There ain't no other secret knowledge. This is it. And this will get you safe to where your destination is in Jesus. And it will keep you there. Foundationed, unmovable, unwavering. You will never go wrong by trusting your Bible. Ever. 
Never, never, ever, never, ever. Because God has never lied and God cannot lie and God keeps his promises. That's what faith is all about. It ain't about manifestation. If I believe I received that new car, it'll come. No, it's about believing that God says, I will deliver you to me through my son. As you stay faithful and believe that I sent Jesus to pay for your sins and he gave you his righteous life of 33 years and you were his righteousness and I will call you son or daughter and you will call me father. If you believe that, then this will keep you grounded in that. Second Timothy 3.16, read it. It will keep you there. Second Timothy uh, 2.15 will keep you grounded in Christ and faith is about trusting God that he will keep the promise that he gave the Israelites and has been given to us. That's what faith is in. Not in things, not in people, but in Christ alone and God's holy word. They're without natural affection. They're unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control. They're fierce. All witches will breathe fire and brimstone, man. They'll tell you, I'll tear your life apart. Well, they can because you gave them all the information. They can do a lot of stuff. They can slander. You just heard that too. They're arrogant. They're boastful. They'll throw your name under the bus. Oh, they'll do it. And if they got demonic power, if the demon says, you know what? I want you to really hurt that man. That's what demons like to do. They torment. But let, let, let's trust our Bible again. Let's trust our Bible. What do fallen angels do? We're just going to go through a brief look for time. Fallen angels have names. If they got names, Luke 8, 30, Revelation 9, 9, 11. They speak, Luke 9, 4, 34, verse, 40, oh, sorry, verse 41 in chapter 4. Uh, Luke 8, 28, that's chapter 8, verse 28. Matthew 8, 29, Mark 5, 12, Acts 19, 15, Mark 3, 11. So yeah, them spirit guides, yeah, they talk. Demons. They know who Jesus is. Absolutely they do. Luke 4.34, they know their future damnation. They know exactly where they're going. Mark 8.29, they know the saved from the unsaved. You don't think they know who them witches are? They know my name. That ain't arrogant. That's facts. That's in Revelation 9.4. They know who are saved and they know who are not. They ain't messing with them saved folks the way they mess with unsaved. They got to go through things. They got to use schemes and mechanisms. And the Bible tells us we got to be aware of them so we don't fall victim because we can. I did. It happens. That's how skilled demons are. Fallen angels is all they are. That ain't all. That's enough. Listen to this. 2 Corinthians 2, chapter 10 through 11. I'm sorry, cha chapter 2, verses 10 through 11. Now I also forgive whomever you're forgiven of give of anything. For if I if for if indeed I have forgiven anything, I've forgiven the one for the, for that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ. So he's talking about if you when they forgive, it's if I forgive my, my let's say somebody did a wrong to me and I forgive them. Okay? That means my brothers and sisters in Christ will also forgive that person. So there's no more. There's no more, well, I know you forgave me and let him off the hook, but I ain't going to let him off the hook. That's that spirit of evil. Mm -mm. No, we forget. If they forgive and I forgave them, then my people should forgive them as well. That's how that works. But listen to this. So that no advantage, notice what he's saying. So that no advantage may be gained over, by, by, uh, over us by Satan, and we're not ignorant of his schemes. One of the greatest schemes of the devil that humanity disciples, non-disciples, all fall for is unforgiveness. Because they, you'll hear this cheap lie, oh, I forgave him, but I'll never forget Then you didn't forgive him, player. You still playing games with the devil. He's still pimping you out for nothing. That's the scheme. He just told you. And if I forgive, that means my family should forgive. That means we treat you as though what? It's all good, baby. Witches don't want to preach that. False prophets don't preach that. Uh-uh. That takes away money from their self-help. That takes money away from their arrogance. The Trent Sheltons, the Leighton Jennings, 
uh, the the Stephen Furtick's and all them guys. Yeah, it sounds cute, but there's always a hint and a taste. Well, forgive them so God will give you everything back. No, you forgive them because they deserve it. Not only God commanded, they deserve it. Because if Christ is willing to forgive, that means God is willing to forgive. And God has a right. He has a right not to forgive us. And he chooses to show his mercy through Christ, his word, his spoken word in living flesh that's living to this day, a living spirit at the right hand of God. Christ is still forgiving today, which means God is forgiving. Same, same God. Old Testament, New Testament, no difference. So if we forgive and we treat that person back with equal love and appreciation, the marriage goes on, the friendship continues, the family bond continues, it all continues. So that way there's no advantage that Satan can gain and, we'll be, and we won't be ignorant of his scheme. Well, I don't forgive my husband, I don't forgive my wife. And the devil's like, I know you should not. And I sent my little agents out there, which look like Christians, talk like Christians, but they ain't disciples. Or they may be in what? They may be the same thing. They may be in the scheme. It can happen. But you'll always know about their unforgiveness and how that relationship is not healed, but is treated like, oh, it's still damaging. That's how the devil works, man. Very subtle. You can't outthink him. That's why the Bible says to resist him and he'll flee. You don't give him any daylight. You don't do what Eve did. You did what Christ did in Matthew 4. He answered with scripture, man. The weapon, this weapon slays everything it hits. Everything. Thoughts, imaginations, witchcraft, all of that trash. It burns it all up. Can't be undefeated. Cold, stone cold, undefeated. Undefeated. Bible may have changed translation. The words are changed for for, for maybe because it's thought for thought or phrase for thought or, or however it's translated. Because that's what translations do. They try to they translate for reading comprehension. But you know what? All the scrolls and documents say the same thing. Unchanging book. Unchanging. It says the same thing that it always says that God can be trusted and man cannot N slays and kills everything that it hits every time 100 lethality so now we understand we ca we got to watch out and these are evil people so we continue back it's a long study i'm, I'm telling you it's 18 minutes in i know it's long i'm hurting but i'm i'm hoping that you can the good news about youtube and the podcast you can keep stuff on there that's fresh and it keeps going. So that way you can always go back to it. So let's continue. The kind of people that it attracts and the people that are attracted to it. Okay? So we left off at natural affection, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control. They're fierce. They're no lovers of good. They're traitors. They're headstrong. They're conceited. They're lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. That They get around and say, oh, we believe in God, but we believe it's this way, God. That's called an idol. It's an idol because God only can only be worshipped in spirit and in truth. If they deny this on any level, that ain't God. I promise that. It's that simple. Listen to this. Traitors, headstrong, conceit. They're headstrong. They're stubborn. They ain't giving up. They're traitors. They will stab you in the back or turn you in a heartbeat because the only thing that matters is their power and their money. And listen to this. And they're not, they love pleasure. The manifestors too. We want to give, just give you what your heart wants. Satan offered the same thing to Eve. Genesis chapter three, one through seven. Read it yourself. It's the same thing Satan offers. Now these witches, prostitutes, psychic mediums, tarot readers, the, the manifest people, the law of attraction, all of them come from the same, same Babylon whore. All of them. Listen to this. Holding a form of godliness. They appear innocent. They appear that we're not combative like Christians are. We don't go on their webpage telling them to the trash. They come and assault us. They come and hurt us because we're doing nothing. We're all about good vibes only. Raising the vibration. 
I also got the alien people. We, we believe in the Octurians, and they're they're so nice and sweet. They want to see humanity. They want to see uh, humanity's uh, 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 uplifting. Those are demons. Remember lying wonders, strange demonstrations. We just said in the last video, strange demonstrations and miracles, things that that UFO man I saw. It. Of course you did. Who do you think's giving them out? The devil's really good at this. He has power. And the job is simple. Don't turn to God. Turn to everything else. But not God. Not, don't ever turn to God. Because then you ain't destined to hell no more. When you start coming to trust the Lord Jesus Christ and you repent of your sins and this Bible becomes your weapon of choice that you never leave home without, and you trust Christ to your salvation? Oh, yeah, they now they know your name. Witches and stuff, who care less? But they know them. Why? Because they got to know who they can use. To the saved, they need to make sure that that person doesn't go out and do more work. See, lazy Christians, you can spot them. They don't ever share the gospel. They share themselves. Lazy disciples, they don't ever share the gospel. They just, well, I give money and I do this and I do that. And, and I show myself and I, that nobody cares about that. Matthew 28, 19, 20 said, make disciples. He didn't say make followers and make likes and get people to subscribe to your channel. He didn't do that. So remember, they look godly. But in verse five in 2 Timothy chapter three, it says what? It says they hold a form of godliness. They look pure and clean. They talk a good game. But having denied its power, they denied, they denied this Bible. They denied what God does. They denied Jesus Christ is who the Bible says he is. They, they hope we're peaceful, but they deny the God of all comfort. The God that gave his son to you and me to be reconciled to him. So you do not perish in your sin. God has no interest in seeing you go to hell. None. And he gave us Christ to make sure, to ensure we do not. He didn't just say, I'm not sending you. I'm giving you my son to guarantee it. And all you got to do is believe in him. Believing in Jesus, believing in God, they're the same person. Because believing in Jesus, trusting God's word, his promise. That's Jesus. All promises and grace and truth is in Christ. It's in our Bibles. So, who do they fall for? Look at verse 6. This is where, now let me tell you who Satan, the witchcraft people, the psychic, the mediums, all of them. Remember who they appeal to, who want to be one, and who they look for. It's one person and one gender they look for. Women. And effeminate men. And there's a difference between men that practice homosexuality or in homosexuality or whatsoever, whatever, it, however that looks, and men and women. But also effeminate men, men who have that divine diva ship. You know, they can be pushed around by the devil without any pushback. We can say Adam had some of that in what? In the Garden of Eden when he let his wife do all that. A Adam had that first tinge, that first stench of it. Listen to this. For some of these people, who, listen to this. For some of these people, that's them we just read about, who creep into houses and take captive gullible women. Didn't say men, did he? Because most of these, because it said in verse two, for men will be. So you now know who your top brass is. Which is, oh, it ain't, it's women. No, that's your top brass. There was a man somewhere. He may be effeminate. He sure is. All day and twice on Sunday. So I ain't nobody. But look at what they do. Gullible, they captive, take captive, enslave, gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts. What does that mean? Various lusts, the emotions. Notice they're attacking women loaded down with sins and with various desires. 
Genesis chapter 3. How did Satan attack Eve? How did he go after her? Remember we talked about the garden, who was in the garden. He went to Eve first. How did he attack her? Here we go. Listen to this. He says, no, you will not die. The serpent said, this is verse 4 in Genesis chapter 3. The serpent said, the woman, in fact, God knows that when you eat, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman saw the fruit was good for food, various lusts, various lusts, and that the tree was good for food and delightful to look at. These are feelings. Feelings. And the tree was good for food and delightful to look at and that it was desirable for obtaining wisdom. Various lusts. Gullible. Eve right here. A feminine Adam sitting right next to her. Dude didn't say nothing. A feminine male. Listen to this. For obtaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband. Men, quit listening to your wives. They'll get you killed. You better trust God. Keep reading. Watch this. Who was with her and he ate it. A feminine male trait. Didn't tell her stop. Heard the conversation. Overheard the conversation. Did nothing. Because various arrogant Self-lovers, boastful, arrogant, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. He was unthankful. He was disobedient to God. He had no natural affection toward his wife. He was unfair. He was slander. He's going to slander in a little bit. And he used no self-control. Various love. These women, like Eve, Adam's effeminity right there in these men. Listen to this. Then their eyes were both open and they knew they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made cover. That's why women wear clothes. That's why men wear clothes. That's why one of the devil's greatest tools is what? Yoga pants, tight shirts, short shorts, wives showing all their skin. I, I fell for it. I fall for it. I suffer in porn addiction. We all suffer in some manner. But that's what they do. Men walk around with the fitness and the shirts and the veins and, the, and the, they're obsessed with their body. For men be lovers of self. All about how they look. Money and boastful and arrogant. Look at my body. And they go after women loaded down with the same sins. That's who they appeal to. That's who they want to get. And those women are gullible because they're loaded down with sins. Sin does one thing very good. It lies to you greatly. You don't need God. You can do it yourself. Pull yourself up by your own bootstrap. You can do it yourself. You got this. Them, them witches. Man, this is all. You just need a little help from your spirit guy. Then you'll be on your way. They never tell you when that help comes. Because they, they got to sell you to the next fix. A good drug dealer just gives you just enough. It ain't so much that it breaks the bank, but it's enough to where you got to scrounge together. Because you'll burn through it. And he knows, and he ain't selling you more than what's going to benefit from you coming back. These witches, mediums, psychic, terror readers, they're all the same. All the same. Manifestation, law of attraction. They got to have a steady diet of people. Sorry about that. They got to have a steady diet of people to keep coming because if they stop coming, they don't get paid. And now you're messing with the chain of events. You're messing with their money. So they got to attack Christians and they got to attack every Christianity is bad for business. When a Christian starts to, to get out into the community and start telling people worship God and, you know, prices start to, to get, become a problem. They got to make things cheaper because people ain't buying no more because they're turning to God. God has a natural affinity on a person to where you don't start looking for the world for joy. You start looking to him. You want to talk about real weight loss? Try studying the word of God. You will fast beyond measure. That fast. Because you're not living by the word of the Lord alone. It means I'm living by food alone. You're living by the very word of the Lord. That's Matthew chapter 4. So we keep reading. Listen to this. So after man sins, in verse 
verse 8, Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening, and they hid from the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. First time now, God is now what? He's afraid of him. God went from father to hunter. They knew it. They knew they sinned, and they were afraid. And they had good reason. Because what did God say if you eat that tree? You're dead, man. What didn't happen, which is God's mercy. Let's, let's keep reading. So the Lord God called out to Adam, called out to man, and said to him, where are you? Where are you at, Adam? Not Eve, because Eve didn't have a name yet. Notice that? In verse 3, now the serpent was most cunning of the wild animals that the Lord God had made, and he said to the woman, she had no name yet. When he said Adam, Adam looked up, Eve looked up. Because they're like, oh God, he's calling us. Listen to this. Keep, let's keep going. And he said, Adam, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Listen to how good God is. Then he said, who told you you were naked? Notice God gets right to, the, the Bible gets right to the point. Who told you the Bible's a lie? That's all God cares about. Man, I heard it. No, 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 no. Who told you that? It so always goes to, he goes right to the root of the issue because that's how much, when you love someone, you go right to the issue to find out what is going on. That's what's happening. Who told you you were naked? They weren't naked before, but they had, because the shame of a sinner is clothing. They want, what a society, what do Satanists, what do the devil want, what do witches want, what do all of them want? What do they promote? The body, show it off. Ain't no shame. Exactly the opposite. They want you to enjoy your sin. Did we just not read that? Slanders without self-control. No lovers of good. Lovers of self. Lovers of money. Unthankful. Unholy. No natural affection. They're traitors. They're headstrong. They love pleasure. God ain't lying. The less modesty... Less crisis involved. That is. So now we go down deeper. Man, I can go all day with this, but you, you get where I'm going. Well, you get where the Bible's going. So who do they appeal to? These women weighed down. Listen to this. Multi-level marketing schemes, you know, pyramid schemes, you know, things like that, Herbalife, uh, Amway, all the people that, the uh, Kirby vacuum cleaner, all these guys that build up that stuff. Listen to this. Why would, here's, here's the thing. So you know how aggressive they are. You know, already know telemarketers that, that's trying to sell you something. They're very aggressive. They try to get you to have confirming language or like saying, you know, are you willing to have this demonstration? And you say yes. And then maybe like 10 minutes later, they say what well, you like, you know what? I'm really not interested, but you already agreed that we'd come out for you. Can we just go ahead and do this? That's how it works. They'll ask you. So are you committed to saying yes, that you want this new phone? Are you saying yes, you want this new deal? Are you saying they use these qualifying like, do you want me to do this reading for you? I can tell you that I can really give you all that you need to know. It's going to cost you a little bit, but I promise you it's reasonable. I'll work with you. Would you like to get this reading today? Would you like me to place this spell for you today? That's how it works. Yes, of course. Because they, they give you a little bit. They give you a little bit of the taste of what they can do or what this thing can do or what they're offering. They get you to commit to it. Listen to this. So why would anybody engage in it? Listen to this. So the direct, according to the Direct Selling Association, the National Trade Organization for Companies that market products and services, listen to this. They market direct, they directly market to consumers and their independent sales force is about 18.6 million Americans are involved in these, these multi-level marketing schemes. It's a lot of folks, right? Listen to this. And a staggering 74% are women. 74%. What do these multi-level marketing schemes offer women? Women that are single or trying to supplement their income. The, their, the money's not enough for them. And there could be legitimate valid reasons. I'm not saying that they're not. Single women, women that want to get rich, fix, get, get rich quicker. Because, you know, they got to get ahead of the curve. 
And they, let's be straight honest. There's still some really unjust, misogynistic, sorry men out there that still want to belittle women and keep women underpaid. Them are pathetic, effeminate men because they're looking at women as threats versus as cherished treasures. That's exactly right. So the witches and the psyches and the mediums, which are women, majority of them are, they want to appeal to who? Other women like them. And they appeal to the same self-lovers. They want the money, the boastfulness, the arrogance, the disobedience to parents. They have no natural affection for men. They're slandering men. They got no self-control. They don't love good. They're traitors. They're headstrong. They're conceited. They love us of pleasure rather than love of God, lovers of God. These, these gullible women, they're hoping that you're one of them. If you're a woman, listen to this. They're hoping you're one of them. Bottom line. Bottom line. It's very simple. They prey on you. The men, it's very easy. Men, you see those men, it's always talking about money, the David Gogans and all them, them losers and Trent Shelton's and the, the hip hop preacher and his fake self, all up off of the same thing. That's who these people are and that's who they target because they target your pain. They target your your hopelessness. They target you not being able to feed your family. They target the fact that you're in a dead-end job that you consider dead-end because maybe you are living beyond your means. Maybe the place you live is more expensive than you can afford. Look, I'm not trying to shame your area. I'm just telling you, they look for those that are suffering or those that are greedy. Remember, as the people that they appeal to, they also look for the people that have their same traits. Read 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 to 6. You will find them. The word gynecarian. These are the gullible women. Listen to what it says. Any woman, listen to this, a silly woman, a weak-willed woman of any background, of any age. It ain't specific to nobody. Not specific on if she's black, white, green, yellow. It don't matter if she's Muslim, Christian, uh, 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 Hindu, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter about how old she is and she can be. If she's old enough to have a debit card, they want her. If she's old and can't walk, they still want her because they got something that you want and they want your money. They want your attention like Simon Magus. And they will dazzle and dazzle and dazzle and dazzle you with lying wonders like Simon Magus did in Acts chapter 8. Now let's close out in chapter 8. Let's go back. So Acts chapter 8. I told you we were going back there. You probably thought I forgot. We're already at 37 minutes. Man, we can go. It, it goes fast, man. God is so good. It time. You want to talk about real time travel or time slowing down? Get in your Bible and watch time get a little bit lost. It's amazing. Listen to this. So you got, you got Simon. Now listen to this. When Simon saw the spirit, listen, so we, we left off in the last episode. So you got to look at the last episode. If not, you can listen to this part. It's in Acts chapter 8. So after Philip was in Samaria, after now Simon was already there, and he was astonishing the Samarians and the pagans that lived there. They were just loving Simon. They said, this man has the true power of God. He's amazing. Satan gave that man power. That's what happens. And he was dazzling and keeping them people in ignorance. They were not looking any other place but to Simon until Philip showed up. And when real authentic power showed that made Satan's power look like pennies and peanuts, they believed that's what God's power does. It's beautiful. It's clean. It's great. It does not harm. It's not out to prove that the man is powerful. It is there to prove that God is powerful. It's not Philip that has power. It is God. God worked through Philip. Philip never took credit for that. No disciple or apostle will. That's how you know who's who. Listen to this. And basically the Sumerians were baptized in water. They had John's baptism, which is baptized by water. They did repent. And they did profess Christ as Savior, but they had not the Holy Spirit. So a two-fold function happened here. This was the second Pentecost that happened in the first one in Acts chapter 2. This is the second Pentecost. So that way the Israelites, these are the born Jews that knew, they would know that, hey, 
Sumerians, which are pagans on every sense of the word, and the mixed breeds and the half breeds and the, and, the, and the Gentiles that lived amongst them. They were all in that one group that God was giving salvation to both Israelites and non-Jews. That was important to show them that there's unity in the church. That God didn't just favor Israelites. He also wanted Gentiles. And that was always part of the plan. It never changed. God didn't say, well, I'm, I, I, I guess I shall take the non-Jews with me. They were always part of the plan. But the Israelites were always the representatives of God. Always has been. He created a people that were nothing. They didn't exist before Genesis chapter 12. There was no such thing as an Israelite before Acts, before Acts chapter, I'm sorry, before Genesis chapter 12. God made, took a pagan man, Abraham, and made the Israelites through his seed, both by blood and then will come by faith. Amen to that. Somebody's got to say an amen. So if you ever want to know the greatest proof of God's existence that, that you can always point to, Outside of just his Bible, the Israelites, Israel itself, they can trace their lineage back to the very blood of Adam. These were all facts. They didn't exist before what? They can trace it all the way back to Abraham. All the way back. They know where they come from because they didn't exist until Abraham. It's amazing. And you got religions trying to steal the Israelites' birthright. That's another story. So listen to this. So now when the apostles John and, uh, and Peter came, they saw the Sumerians that they legitimately repented and they had the baptism because, you know, Philip had to tell them because they didn't see the baptism, but they did hear the professions and the confessions. So he laid hands on them. So he said, can you imagine that? That's where you get the people holding their hands and, and that he prayed that the Holy Spirit would come upon them. And it did. Now listen to this. The perception is of a perceptions of witches. Remember, they got touched by the devil, which means he's giving them power. They go open their eyes. And remember, we're already living souls because we live in this flesh body. That's real. Because God did that. We were nothing but a lump of clay made from dirt, and he breathed life into it. Case closed. Not from monkeys came from God. We were made from dirt. From when we return, what do we turn to? When you run across dust as human skin, from dirt we came to dirt will return. And for the disciples of Christ, this body, all of it goes to, goes to become something better than what we've ever seen. What Christ's body was and so when he resurrected, what we'll be soon as disciples. Those outside of Christ, you will have a body built for hell. And I do not I do not, I do not want that to happen for you. So listen to this. Now we go back to Simon. But listen to this. When Simon saw the Holy Spirit was given through the laying on the apostles' hands, listen to this. This is how you know Simon knew that the power they had was real, it was better than his, stronger than his, and was unstoppable. When Simon saw the spirit was given through the laying of hands on the apostle on the, on the apostles hands, he offered them money. Give me this power also so that anyone I lay hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. Remember holding the form of godliness, but having denied his power. Second Timothy chapter three, verse five. Verse 20 in Acts chapter 8. But Peter told him, May your silver be destroyed with you because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. Think about that. This is what these scammers and psychic, the, the legitimate ones. Let's talk about the legitimate ones now. They think that, that the Christian power is nothing. Oh, God ain't nothing. Oh, I think about it, it's a higher teller, the universe. That lie. No, that, that, that's Satan stuff. The universe is talking to you. That's Satan. That's him. God of all this stuff. That's the power of the air. That's God. That's what, that's what the God of this world is called. That's what they call Satan. God runs everything. God, the Father, he runs everything. 
Satan been given power of the earth. And all them, them crazy belief systems, it's all Satan. Oh, the universe is telling you, of course, denying the power of God. We're going to get to that in Romans chapter 1. But listen to this. And he's saying what? May that money die. Remember, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant. Here's your witch Christian saying, look, I'll give you that money. Let me have that power so I do the Holy Spirit too. I want to be authentic. I want to be recognized as real. Listen to verse 21. You have no part or share in this matter because your heart is not right before God. Therefore, repent of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible, your heart's intent may be forgiven. He can't change his heart, can he? You can't rework your heart, can you? These witches promise you can rewire your mind, can you? These law of attraction, you can make magnets out of your mind, can't you? All of it is one big scam. To self-help, you can retool yourself. Listen to stuff overnight, you become better. All they're offering is greed. Ch uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. That's all they can offer. Can't offer anything else. So now, here's Peter saying what? You better hope and pray. And I want you to do it. You need to pray to God and beg him for forgiveness. That he will forgive you for what you did. Listen to this dude. Remember, Christian witch, but listen to his response. Horrible. Listen to this, verse 22, 23. For I see you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by wickedness. Every one of those witches, psychics, mediums, oh, I'm Christian. Until they got a Bible show up, then all the bitterness, all the angst, all the ugliness of their wickedness will show up. Ah, oh, you're judgmental. You'll hear it all. I hear it all. It don't scare me. Whatever. I get it. I know why. Denying its power. Remember, that's it. Verse 5, 2 Timothy chapter 3. You want to talk about, a, you want to talk about a, a decimating, destructive chapter against law of attraction and all that manifest junk? Boom. So listen to Simon's response. The Christian witch responds, finally. Verse 25, so that you have, so listen to this. So verse 25, here's Peter still telling him. So after you had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I went ahead of myself. Pray, pray, pray to the Lord. I'm sorry, verse 25, I went way ahead. I'm so sorry. So listen to this. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by wickedness. Verse 24, listen to what Simon's response is. Pray to the Lord for me, Simon replied, so that nothing you have said may happen to me. Denying the power of God. Lover of God, no lover of God. Unforgiving, doesn't want to repent. Peter told him, you can repent to God and be saved. Hopefully, that's what you want to do, right? No, I'm not doing it. You do it, Peter. You do it. You tell God so I don't get killed. Wow. No faith. Remember, he followed Philip. But he didn't follow Philip. Ooh, I'm sweating. He didn't follow Philip out of a good heart. He didn't seek God because he wanted reconciliation with God. He sought God because he wanted the power. Witches won't. They want the power. They want the universe under their control. They want to tell you the universe does things for them. The manifest people, the law of attraction people, all them fools, all them liars, they all want to sound like there's something great, just like Simon, and they're nothing. They're nothing. They're nothing. They're dying, and they know it. And so they make up delusions and the devil will solidify those delusions to make them think they are something. You're not going to die. Just like he said to Eve in the garden, God's not going to kill you. You can't trust God. You can't trust this Bible. He ain't going to kill you. That witch will die one day and it'll just be death, which means not annihilation. 
That'd be the holding pattern. Death, hell for angels, death for humans, until the final judgment where God just gives them what they've earned and then both will be thrown into the lake of fire. That's the end result. Hell ain't even a final destination. It's, it, it's a holding pattern. Though death and hell are the what? They're just the temp prisons. That's it. They ain't final, man. So, what do these people do? What is their goal? What is their end game? Why does God hate them so much? Because they seek to keep you blind. They seek to keep you from ever being right with God. They have no interest in you being right with God at all. They want you to be right with their ideas, their beliefs. That's all they care about. But we don't give that to them. You don't give them things that they don't deserve. They don't deserve your life for you to die. They don't. They don't deserve your to die. They deserve better. You deserve better. You deserve a real chance with God through Jesus Christ. That's it. You will not attain anything in this world more than the suffering and more suffering. And the delusion that you're at is at peace only comes from what? From the sin that you lied to yourself about and the devil and the world that tells you you're okay and you're not. That's what they offer. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. This is what they offer. Listen to this. It's terrible what they offer. Among the prophets of Samaria, isn't that amazing? Where Simon ends up, right? What we just read in Acts. I saw something disgusting. They prophesied by Baal, that's Satan, and led my people Israel astray. Among the prophets of Jerusalem, also I saw a horrible thing. Notice both are getting afflicted by those that love the Lord and those that despise the Lord. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen the hand of evildoers and none turns his back on evil. The witches, the mediums, they all do that. And they promise things that sound great. Man, they promise you the world. Man, they promise you things that are fantastic. Man, they got nothing but good news. Listen to this. They got nothing but good news. Jeremiah 23, 16, 18. Thus says uh, the Lord of armies, don't Listen to the words of the prophets who prophesy to you. They teach you vanity. They speak a vision of their own imagination and not out of the mouth of God. They say continually to those who despise me, God has said, you shall have peace. And to everyone who walks in stubbornness of his own heart, that there's no evil shall come to you. God's not going to send you to heaven. Those Christians are just wrong. God's saying right here, I didn't tell them that. They're telling you about peace is coming to you, brothers and sisters. Ain't no peace coming. Mm -mm. No. They continually despise me. That's what God is saying about them. And listen to this. In verse 18, he really puts the indictment in. For who has stood in the counsel of God that he should perceive and hear his word? Who has marked my word in his heart? Has they spoke anything that's in this Bible? Because if they haven't and they speak against it, it is absolutely untrustworthy. God does not contradict himself ever. Never. If they speak anything that's outside this Bible or they try to add things in. Not happening, man not happening can't happen will not happen move this over here will not happen so what are their techniques their tactics 
That's in a video that talks about manifestations and speaking things to existence. Listen to that video for the sake of time because those videos tell you all their tactics. But I'm going to give to you in Daniel chapter 2. Read Daniel chapter 2 because Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And in that dream, he found, he called his, listen to this, Nebuchadnezzar verse 1 in chapter 2 of Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar had dreams and his spirit was vexed. The king gave orders to call all the magicians, all the conjurers, all the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, which are a race of folks, is where these witches and stuff come from, to tell the king his dreams. If they were able to interpret the dream by telling the dream of the king, they would be. They, or if they were not able to interpret the, the dream by telling the king what his dream was, they would be torn to pieces. That's a serious, serious indictment, right? He's saying, look, either you tell me what's in my dreams... I'm killing you. I'm killing you all. All of them are going to die. Listen to verse nine. So the, the now we're, got, we're, we're going for the sake of time, but you can read this for yourself between verses uh, from six to eight. I'm six to eight. The basically the Chaldeans are saying, oh, king, oh, king, tell us what it is that's going on. Tell us what your dream is so we can interpret it for you. Listen to what he says. No, you make it known to me. And I told you, if you do it, if you tell me what my dream is, you get riches. You don't, I kill you. So listen to this, verse 9, that if you do not make the dream known to me, there's only one decree for you. Remember, he told me, I'll tear you to pieces. For you have agreed together to speak lying and corrupt words before me until the situation is changed. Therefore, tell me the dream that I may know that you can declare to me its interpretation. He's telling you again, specifically tell me what it is. I shouldn't have to tell you nothing. They were begging Nebuchadnezzar. We don't know, man. You got to tell us. He says, no, ma'am. No, sir. You tell me what's in the dream or I tear you guys to pieces. Listen to what they said. The Chaldeans answered the king. There is not a man on earth who could declare the matter for the king in as so much as no great king or ruler has ever asked anything like this of any magician, conjurer of Chaldean. Listen to this. Listen to what they keep saying. It. Moreover, the thing which the king demands is difficult, and there is no one else who could declare it to the king except God, whose dwelling place is not with mortal flesh. They're actually being honest. That's why you have these dream interpreters. They tell you what? Tell me your dream, and I'll interpret it for you. No, no, no. If they're dream interpreters, they should be able to tell you the dream. Plain and simple. Boom. If they can't, they're liars. And they're scumbags. Because of the king, listen to this. Became, verse 12. Because of this, the king became indignant and furious and gave orders to destroy all wise men of Babylon. From them Chaldeans saying, look, man, we are sorcerers. I get it, but we can't do that which means Satan can't read minds, can he? Nope. Angels aren't telepathic, are they? Nope. Fallen angels ain't telepathic, are they? Nope. These are legit, these are legit witches. They got nothing for you. They cannot tell you anything because only God tells people who they are and what they are. God will tell you himself. Let's go to Isaiah chapter, oh God, was chapter 19. I think we're going to, yeah, Isaiah chapter 19. Let's listen. Let's look at Isaiah 19. Man, this just gets better and better. Let the, let the word of the Lord be known that God is good. God is the only one that's good. Listen to this. So let's go to verse 41 first. So Isaiah 41, 20 through 29. When I look, there is no man even among them. There is no counselor who, when I ask of them, can answer a word. Behold, all of them, their works are vanity and nothing. Their molten images are wind and confusion. He's talking about psychics, mediums, spiritists, all witches, witchcraft. All of them. Manifestation guys, the law of attraction guys, the 369 manifestation guys, the alien guys, the Arterian guys, all of them. Scammers. Numerology, horoscopes, all of them. One big mountain of scams. Verse four, uh, chapter 40 in Isaiah, 13 to 14. Who has directed the spirit of God or has taught him as his counselor? How do you go tell you about God? God says in his word, I teach man myself. Through this right here, God says, I'll teach you myself. Don't need no help. 
Who did he take counsel with and instructed him? Who taught him in the path of justice and taught him knowledge and showed him the way of understanding? Nobody tells God nothing. Nothing. And by the same token, we, he ain't going to tell them. He ain't giving them nothing about you. So let's go ahead and go to uh, Isaiah chapter, chapter 19. I believe it's Isaiah chapter 19. One of the beauties about studying the word of God is being able to let God do the work for you. Listen to this. So verse three, the spirit of Egypt. Now you talk about e the Egypt. This is when he's basically pronouncing destruction for them because they were idol worshipers. They love to do those kind of things. Listen to this. So let's go to verse one. The burden of Egypt. Behold, God rides on a swift cloud and comes to Egypt. The idols of Egypt will tremble at his presence and the heart of Egypt will melt in its midst. All them idols and charms and all those things they use, the tarot cards and all them crystals and all that. Ain't got nothing, man. I will stir up the Egyptians against the Egyptians and they will fight everyone against his brother and everyone against his neighbor. City against city and kingdom against kingdom. The spirit of Egypt will fail in its midst. I will destroy its counsel. They will seek the idols, the charmers, those who have familiar spirits, and the wizards. I will give over the Egyptians into the land of a cruel Lord, and a fierce king will rule over them, says the Lord God of armies. He's going to tear it up, man. That's why them, them you will have witches. Oh, those ain't real witches. They're attacking each other now. And they ain't real tarot readers. I can tell you what a new tarot reader, a real tarot reader does it. They attack each other. Just like the Bible says that he, God says, I will give them war. They'll become bitter. They're going to drink their own poison. They're going to, and he's saying what? The devil that was over Egypt at the time, I will have him, everybody be fighting each other. I will show them that they, they will look to their charms and they'll get no answers. None. None. First Corinthians six, nine through 10. Listen to this. Do you need reminding that the unjust have no share in the blessings of the kingdom of God? Do not be misled. A lot of people stand to inherit nothing of God's coming kingdom, including those who live lives are defiled by sexual immorality, idolatry, adultery, sexual deviancy, theft, greed, drunkenness, slander, and swindling. Con men and con artists, they ain't receiving heaven. They got, they're going to receive nothing but hell, nothing else. We covered a lot of ground today, guys. We covered a lot of ground. We covered a lot of ground. And why do they come after God's people? Why are they coming after anybody for that matter? Why are they offering their services? To condemn you, to destroy you, to take away humanity which god doesn't want to lose one soul to hell and hell is coming the devil sends these prostitutes out every time to go lure people in so they don't turn to god that's their end game the end game that's it doesn't change guys i i Nobody can tell you your future but God. Nobody. 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 It's it's very simple. My poor dog is back here coughing. He's gonna have to go outside um, for a little bit of time, so I'll have to wrap this up. But I had to shoot this down completely. Only God. Only God knows what he has for you. Isaiah, I'm sorry, um, Jeremiah 29, 11. You can look it up for yourself for the sake of time, but it's a letter to the Israelites letting them know that their suffering is not in vain, that God will keep his promises. God knows exactly what is for you, and he has offered that in Jesus. Do not seek it from people that do not want you to be right with God. Don't look for people outside of God. Look for your nearest.
disciple of Christ, you'll know them because this will never be far from them. They'll be holding on to this. They'll always say those words that you'll hear. Well, let's see what the Bible has to say. They won't speak to you about glitteries and fairy fun, and it's not going to sound always pretty. But he said, they will tell you, God will give you strength and you will persevere. I love you very much. Don't fall for these witches, mediums, spiritists, alien theory people, law of attraction people, manifestation people, witches, witchcraft. They have no power, no real power to harm you, but they will do so to just scam. They harm your hope. They harm your dreams of wanting to be at peace, real peace, not the world peace. Read John chapter 17 to see God give a pronouncement of a blessing that goes to all his disciples. He says, I will give them a peace, not that the world gives, but that I give them. Christ gives a real peace to his disciples that we want to give that peace to others. That's why we share the gospel. We want you to know that you do not have to die in your sins. Christians will hammer you all day long about God hates your guts. Disciples will tell you God loves you so much. He gave us Christ and it has been given to you. Take hold of him and he will not let you down. I promise. Repent and come home with us. I love you very much. I'm praying for your strength. I'm praying you turn to God and I'm praying you stay strong. I love you very much in Jesus name. Amen.